Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 38 of Ultron, the real robot. Ultron's a real robot with motors and mechanisms in his body and he can move around. He's also got a Bluetooth attached physical brain which tracks his emotions and makes him react to senses. We're actually going to give Ultron a better sense of artificial intelligence with ongoing volition and memories and we're going to build some of that in the virtual world. And the way that's going to work is by using the portal into the virtual world that I showed you in my video a couple of weeks ago. So we've got our virtual world here which uh, looks very much like VR with some things in it. There's some blocks down there we'll have a look at in a minute. But then we've got this portal and um, basically I can walk straight through the portal and straight into the physical world to have a look at all the physical things which works out pretty well. So I've now got some slightly better camera equipment and the camera on a tripod. So if I pop it down just here and we have a look forwards, we should be able to see some virtual blocks and things. And if I grab a Vive controller, I can in fact obviously grab those and do all the things I'd normally do in VR. And I can also uh, go and throw that into the physical world there, so we've got that ability as well. I'm using an HTC Vive setup to uh, make the virtual stuff happen, and previously I was attaching a GoPro to the front of the headset. The setup I've got now, in fact, is a DSLR, which I can turn the image stabilization off so the picture doesn't lag the virtual world, and on top is a Vive tracker, and that allows me to track a virtual camera into the virtual space so I can sync the two up. So this thing's a bit like a handset, but with no handset buttons. There is an expansion port you can break out to make your own controllers, but for now it just tracks in space really well, and I've got a hot shoe adapter so I can fit that on the top of the camera. As I say, look at the link in the description for the previous video for the full setup. So now we can mix the virtual world and the physical world, that gives us several opportunities. You may remember my giant Lego Hyper Reality Blaster where I was looking for a virtual camera shooting virtual bullets into the virtual world, but when I hit the virtual targets, it made the physical targets fall down. That video is in my channel, have a look at that. But essentially what was happening was when I was hitting the virtual target in the virtual world, that was sending some data into the physical world, and the bases the physical targets on had little pushers, and those pushed over the Lego minifigs. So we can do exactly the same thing with Ultron, we can have something in the virtual world that we trigger and that makes Ultron move of course by sending data to it. We can also take the senses from Ultron, his sense of touch, hearing and so on, and we can take that data into the virtual world to actually trigger something in the virtual world. So I'm imagining a kind of virtual machine built with the physics in the virtual world with balls that appear at the top when senses happen, they fall down and they go through various mechanisms. Some of those go into tubes for memories and wherever they fall that gives Ultron volition so that he basically reacts um, in a different way that he would otherwise to senses or that he just does something by himself depending on the physics in the virtual world. We can also replace the camera that's currently in Ultron's nose that looks rather silly uh, by basically taking a virtual object through the portal and waving it in front of him and he can react to that instead of physical items. That's quite possible of course because we can track the location of those virtual objects at all times and we can also make what's called collider meshes within the portal um, because they still exist in virtual space so when we place items in a particular place in physical space Ultron will react differently to them. This is currently Ultron's brain which is a physical thing he's linked to over Bluetooth. It's got two Arduinos in it, one deals with reflex and reaction so the sensor inputs go straight out and he responds to you. The other Arduino in there tracks emotions and those emotions are influenced by the sensor input and that in turn makes him react differently to the sensor inputs. This is the brain map I drew several episodes ago so currently we've got input and output and the reflex and reaction and we're tracking some emotions over here. What we don't have is any volition so we don't have any ability for Ultron to just do things by himself we don't have any memory and those are the things I'm going to implement in the virtual world. Hello right I'm in the physical portal now with Ultron so he's still got his senses like hearing, which of course if I shout in his ear makes his head turn. But I've also set up another interface that you can see to the left of the screen which is three blocks stood on a table. Those blocks are of course in the virtual world and I've got a Vive controller here you can see shaking around and now I can actually uh, control Ultron. I've built a very simple virtual interface so if I'm to poke my uh, Vive controller into any of those blocks, it should make him turn his head. So that's left and right, and yellow brings him back to the middle. So I've got this very crude interface when objects collide. In the virtual world, it sends data out to his brain, 
and makes him do something in the physical world and that works pretty well. The next thing is we need to be able to trigger something in the virtual world from one of Ultron's senses and you'll notice to the right of the portal up there is a big tube and a box below it and I've actually created an interface that means when his hearing is triggered and it could be any sense it creates balls in the virtual world which fall out so if I go like this we should find a ball gets created Sometimes we get a couple if it's really loud. Um, they do expire after 20 seconds. But you'll see the physics work and they fall out there, which works pretty well. So now if I were to go and grab uh, one of those balls there, let's just take that one and go and stick that onto the uh, collider zones I set up before. Although they're a bit big, we can see in fact that it makes Ultron's head move around. So. Uh, So now when a sense is triggered on the physical robot that causes something to happen in the virtual world and when something happens in the virtual world that sends data back out to make the robot move. So now we need something more complicated in the virtual world that ties the two together. But how does that work so far? So all of the virtual world is built in Unity which is a game development environment you can download for free as long as you don't sell over $100,000 of games a year and then you have to pay for it. So it's quite good for development and messing around and um, you can see this is my environment here with the uh, blocks there for colliding, the tube there that chucks the ball out and this is the portal basically so have a look at my other portal video to see how that works but essentially it's a virtual green screen with the DSLR footage um, transposed onto it. And there's several scripts associated with the items so we've got one main script here which um, basically opens the serial port with the brain and does a bunch of stuff. Uh, now essentially what it does is um, there's a timer set up so every second it pulls the brain which is what's going on here and um, when it Pulls the brain, it sends some data to the brain, it sends the value 100, and the brain, of course, is Arduino, so that when it gets uh, the number 100, will check if the hearing's been triggered, a flag gets set, it sets a variable from 0 to 1, and if that flag is set, it sends back the data 500, otherwise, it sends back the number 400. It has to send back something, because otherwise, Unity would hang waiting for the data, uh, which gets read every time it does that, but it is limited to one second. So it's not sending data on every frame of the uh, thing which runs in VR at 90 frames a second which would be far too fast for the brain to handle. Now this script also deals with um, chucking the ball out. So um, this is the same script I used to fire the Lego bricks in my Lego Virtual Reality Blaster and I got a tutorial from this channel Bracer Jack. You can also support his Patreon campaign. Uh, this video is how to shoot bullets in Unity under three minutes. It's a really good uh, tutorial on how to basically make objects appear. And basically I've uh, used the code from that to uh, make my balls appear when the thing receives a number 500. So now my collider zones have their own scripts and um, each one sends a different piece of serial data out. So uh, they send the values 102, 103 and 101 at the moment. And again, the brain, when it receives those, if it gets a value over 100 or uh, below 100, one of those is triggering hard-coded speech phrases, and the other one is triggering hard-coded moves, uh, which I did in previous episodes. So we need to add far more of those, so we've got far more options for Ultron to do something through its volition, but essentially all that will be decided in the physics environment, depending on what happens to the balls in between being emitted and hitting a collider mesh. Right, so now you can see there are some coloured tubes set up. I've got three emitters just to the right of the portal there. Uh, one of those is for hearing, which is the yellow ball. So uh, if we make some loud enough sounds around his ears, some yellow balls pop out. Uh, and the other two are for touch on each side of Ultron's body. So if we uh, give him a poke on that side, obviously his limbs react as they did before. And hopefully some uh, blue balls appear. It's polling at half a second now. So... Uh, there's a bit of a backlog sometimes if I do too many sensory inputs, but it mostly works. And the other one is this side of the body, uh, which is the uh, the grey emitter there, which if I poke him enough, we should find eventually some grey balls appear. You can just see them there. They go falling off the edge of the screen. So that seems to work pretty well. So now we can identify which touch or which sense was triggered 
and that does something different in the virtual world. Right, I'm just going to wave the camera around a bit, so we've still got the portal there, but now there's something big and grey floating up in the sky there. And I can't get the camera up there to show you, so I'm going to go into actual virtual reality to show you what that is. So here we are downstairs in the virtual world. We've got um, the green portal there, of course, because I don't have a real camera on my headset. So there's uh, nothing to go and composite in there, but we've got the interfaces there for Ultron. If we were to go over and poke them, uh, all of that good stuff works. So um, actually what we've got up there, I'm going to teleport myself up. And I'm going to put myself just on this back corner. Here we are. So now we've got our um, emitters here. We can see there's a yellow ball in there. And they're in these kind of gates here. So um, if I make a loud sound, you should see Ultron reacting and um, spewing out some more yellow balls. There we go. And of course, the balls don't go anywhere. They get caught in here. You can see them expiring there as well as um, they expire after 30 seconds. But if I pick up the gate, we should be to uh, let some flow out. There we go. So we can just pop that back there. And um, that works pretty well. So uh... now, of course, those balls are kept in these things until at such time they're released, which will be part of the mechanism of the virtual brain world. I've set up an animation for my gates here, so you can see they pop up one at a time, and those will, that will of course let the balls out. So um, animation's pretty easy to do in Unity. We could script something up to uh, move the um, axis of these, and you can see perhaps on the transform window up on the top right, the axis um, change here as the thing moves. There it goes again. Um, but in fact, I'm using the animation window, which is down at the bottom here. So my gate one has got an animation with some keyframes, uh, which you can see down here which brings it up and down and then it waits and everything's on a five second cycle and they pop up at different points in the five seconds. So gate three is uh, towards the end there, which means as it runs, they uh, pop up in order uh, one after the other. And of course we could trigger these from something else in the code, but for now they're just on a cycle. I've now added a shoot to my uh, virtual brain world here that takes the balls, of course, as they fall out and sends them in this direction. So, uh, in fact, there's a couple of lumps in the shoot here, which I've just crudely placed for now, which uh, help break the balls up a bit. And obviously they hit each other as well. And they shoot all the way down here onto these items. And you'll see these green meshes are actually the collider mesh, uh, which stick out a bit bigger so the balls can fall off the edge of the world triggering those collider meshes and you'll notice I've got um, on those meshes I've got is trigger ticked on here on the box collider and I've got scripts associated with each of those um, and each of those sends serial data out so when a ball goes down in front of each of these boxes it makes Ultron do a different thing and this is just a crude arrangement at the moment to test the proof of concept of the input getting triggered and triggering the output which triggers Ultron. Right, so now we've got the robot running and we've got the virtual world running and the balls get produced when I touch him and when the balls hit colliders that makes him do something. So you can see some yellow balls getting produced there. So all of these senses still work. His false feedback and his initial reactions still work. So if I were to poke either side of his body there, his head turns to look at whatever sense is getting triggered. But also we're getting a load of balls being generated that are rolling down and um, when they hit those colliders, it makes him do something. It's not quite as random as I want at the moment. Oh, there we go, body turning to the left and the head turning there. And um, some of the balls still fall in the same place, just keeping my eye on the monitor over there. But he appears to do some pretty random stuff. Um, obviously, if he doesn't get stimulated, he gets bored and he's still, so we still need something that will drop some random balls in just because, and we still need to tie that into emotions. So the Arduino at the front of Ultron's brain is dealing with reaction and that's the one that actually makes the joints move as I push them and so on and that's the one currently linked to VR to create the balls. At the back we've got another Arduino which is tracking emotions and at the moment as you poke Ultron around more he gets angrier and therefore his emotions change and his reaction gets different. But we can also track that into VR and have some other influence on where those balls go and other mechanisms within the virtual world. What I really want to do is build a robot controlled by robots made of robots. So the brain essentially is one robot that does one thing, it's got a program and it does specific things and makes him react. 
In turn, that is driven by the virtual world, which is essentially another robot with those things opening. But also in the virtual world, I can build pretty much anything. So I'd like to have little robots that are virtual, that go around our animated features, uh, which basically influences what happens in that physics environment with those balls, sends them into different sheets, saves some of them, releases some of them, makes different things happen. And those animated robots can be driven by how Ultron is feeling by that second Arduino tracking emotions. So they actually do some other random things based on um, all of those things, as well as the senses, his emotions, and whatever else is going on in the virtual world. So it's actually quite a complicated virtual world that drives his artificial intelligence. And I guess that's a bit like a human brain, if you want to look at it that way. So of course I could do all of this in code, but it wouldn't be very interesting seeing me sitting there writing code. And that's why I'm doing this with virtual reality. I'm also really interested in the mixed reality stuff, hence the portal and integrating Ultron into it. So I'm hoping you're finding that interesting. Next time we'll be coming back to make it much more complicated, so don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. You should also check out my Patreon campaign, which is how most of these projects are funded. Have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots, and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including all my videos early and a live broadcast with me. All right, that's all for now.